Broken. Chapter 2. Outcasts. In the midst of the ever-free forest, every small woodland creature gasped in fright, hiding from the traveler. A large, strong frame of brown feathers heaved in frustration, a mound of dirt upheaved in razor-sharp talons. The griffin exhaled through nostrils of her beak, hot with anger. Gilda shook her white-feathered head, attempting to calm her weary mind. She had been far from home for the past few days now, fulfilling her duties by gathering fruits and supplies for her village. Ever since her banishment from Ponyville had become known, her village hadn't taken such dishonor lightly. Gilda had shamed her home and been punished with a demotion from her old, well-paying occupation. Two years ago, Gilda had returned to Ponyville in search of her old friend, Rainbow Dash. Her intentions were good, but that wasn't how the engagement had turned out. Dash! Hey, Dash! The Cyan Pegasus whipped her head around in surprise from the skies above. When she spotted Gilda smiling solemnly from the ground, her magenta eyes widened. Rainbow Dash didn't respond until she had landed ten feet in front of the griffin. Gilda? What are you doing here? She asked with a pure look of confusion. The griffin held her head low, trying to gather the courage to put aside her pride and do what she had came to do. Listen, I'm not real good at this, so just let me say it, she said, glaring at the ground between them. I wanted to come by and say, I'm sorry, okay? I wasn't being very cool with you or your friends. Really? said Rainbow, cocking an eyebrow unimpressed. Then why can't you look me in the eye and say it? Gilda scowled, her pride clawing at her words. She slowly craned her neck up to face the Pegasus, her left eye twitching. Rainbow lowered her eyelids, waiting impatiently. I'm sorry, she growled. If you were really sorry, then why do you look like some pony just spat in your face? asked Dash, wearing her own scowl now. Hey, I just came all the way here from... And yet you still can't figure out who you actually need to apologize to! What? Gilda exclaimed, caught off guard by the odd comment. Rainbow Dash stamped her right forehoof and snorted out an angry breath, wings flaring. If you really were here to apologize, then you have all of Ponyville to say it to. Not only did you harass my friends, but half the town! And if you're still too stubborn to see that, then you can just get the hay out of here. And with that, Rainbow turned on a hoof and spread her wings. Dash! I'm not in the mood for you, Gilda. I've already had a terrible day. Now if you'll just do me a favor and get out of here! Rainbow spat over her shoulder, taking off into the air. Gilda's irritation peaked. Oh no, you don't get back here! She yelled. And with the last two words, the griffin threw out her talons, grasping hold of the prismatic tail and ripping the pegasus out of the air hard onto the ground with a loud thud. Gilda recoiled at her own outburst, withdrawing her arm. But before she could apologize, the griffin received a quick rear buck straight to her left cheek. Gilda felt her head fly backwards and her body following suit. Disoriented by the sudden strike, she took a few steps back, attempting to straighten again. Oh, so that's how it's gonna be, huh? Rainbow Dash screamed. She crouched low to the ground, her expression vengeful wings spread defensively. You either take off right now, or I'm gonna... Rainbow Dash was cut off by Gilda, crying in rage with a swift slash towards the Pegasus. Dash stepped backwards out of the way just in time, but the first strike was a feign, and Gilda followed with another claw. This one landed on the Pegasus's shoulder, spraying a line of crimson across the lush green grass. Dash positively roared in pain, throwing her wings back and darting forward. She tackled the griffin and landed atop her, pounding at her face hoof after hoof. Gilda couldn't remember much after that, for her rage had boiled out the rest of the memory. However, she did remember the authorities coming along and separating them, and after that Gilda had been dragged into Ponyville's town hall, and the mayor had signed the form, permanently banishing the griffin from ever coming close to the town again. She heard that Dash was admitted to the hospital for several lacerations and loss of blood. Gilda had a similar experience. Her beak had been cracked in two places, and her cheek had swollen to the size of a melon for weeks. The two of them had truly hurt one another, and it was the griffin felt terrible for her actions. Worst of all, there wasn't any way for her to even make amends with her childhood friend. It had been two years since then, and she still winced at the memory. She knew the fight had been her fault, and that her attitude didn't help resolve the situation before it grew out of hoof, or talon, or whatever. Gilda missed hanging out with the Pegasus. She enjoyed spending time with the only other being that was just like her, 
strong-willed, athletic, brash, and, well, cool. Since then, the Griffin had had a hard time making new friends, especially considering she lived in a town that was nothing but ashamed of her. Of course, she only responded to this with anger. It didn't help that finding another Griffin was extremely seldom experience, for her species was in decline and had become very rare. Gilda had only met in one other Griffin besides her parents, but he wasn't exactly one she would associate with. Swiftwing was a year older than her and bore a strong name. However, Swift wasn't an athlete. He was a bookworm. Which is a surprise, considering his good looks. Gilda sighed as she dropped a talon full of berries into the bag strapped to her back behind her enormous wings. Ugh. Why do I have to do these meaningless chores? Gilda exclaimed to herself, thankful for at least the solitude. This is so lame. I know I kinda messed up, but this is dumb. Two years later, and I'm still being punished. You know what? Buck Ponyville. Oh my, such strong words. Gilda gasped in fright from the voice. She whipped her head around in all directions, but found no source. It had been distant, and somehow didn't sound fully embodied. Had she been imagining it? Oh, now, now, don't be so afraid, my young griffin, said the voice. Such a rare, magnificent breed you are, only to be rejected by those meddlesome ponies. Nope. It was definitely there. Now that Gilda heard more of the voice, she realized it was male and rather eloquent. However, it didn't hold the mannerisms of a Manhattan, but an air of malevolence. The last words had been emphasized with hate, as if the ponies of Ponyville had caused the source of the voice a great injustice. Gilda carefully glared around the clearing, searching for any movement in the midst of the old trees. Who are you? she asked the forest. Oh, so curious. I am but an undignified soul scourged by injustice. I know your pain, Griffin, and I can help you seek vengeance. But you must find me first. Maybe then I will assist you. Or maybe not. What are you talking about? asked Gilda scornfully. I have no hatred towards Ponyville. What happened was my fault. So, maybe I do deserve my punishment. Hmm, you don't sound so convinced, the voice cooed. Maybe the ponies have made you believe that you deserve such a fate, to become an outcast for such a small crime. Gilda's eyes widened. How do you know what happened? Like I said, Gilda, the voice replied, placing emphasis on her name for effect. I am an undignified soul, one that can sympathize with others just like me. I'll ask you one more time before I leave. Who are you? And I'll tell you once again. You must seek me out first. The voice laughed before trailing out into nothingness. What the hey? Gilda scowled at the clearing around her. Her wings flared in irritation. What was that? She started to question her own sanity when she realized where the voice was coming from. To her right, the edge of the Everfree Forest. The griffin lowered her eyelids. That was the border of Ponyville. If she was caught anywhere in the town, she would be facing the authorities again. And who knows what kind of punishment. Wait. Why would she even think about following the source of the voice? Gilda had no grudge against Rainbow Dash or her home, so why would she want to do them any harm with senseless retaliation? However, her meddlesome curiosity was begging her to seek it out, if only to see who or what was talking to her with such an odd voice. But she didn't dare cross the border into Ponyville. The consequences wouldn't be worth the risk. If she was still being punished for a simple fight, then what would they stick her with if she was to violate her banishment? The last thought made the griffin think. It really didn't seem fair to receive such hatred and dishonor over something so trivial. What was the mayor mayor's reasoning behind such an unlawful response? Suddenly Gilda heard a disembodied chuckle coming from the edge of the tree line, which was in eyesight. 
The griffin stared in the direction of the voice, a storm gathering in her mind. Without knowing how or why, Gilda felt herself walking briskly towards the border of Ponyville, carefully stepping over it as if it were a trap. She exhaled when she felt her talons touch the lush green grass on the other side of the tree line, even though she knew nothing would actually happen. Oh, don't fret. I am but a clearing away, one that no pony ever visits, said the voice, glee lacing his words. Gilda refused to give the voice any satisfaction by giving it any sort of reply, but merely listened for the pompous cackling to fading in and out of audibility. She looked around, taking in the scenery. The griffin stood in the middle of a path cut through the edge of the forest, curving through the trees. Gilda strode down the path in almost a brisk run. She didn't trust her foul luck, worried that some pony would stumble upon her and alert the rest of the town. It didn't take long for her to find the source of the cackling. The griffin scowled when she ran into another clearing, only to find two large stone statues. The one to the right was a large, menacing-looking alicorn. The pony was reared in a sort of fighting stance, massive wings spread and muzzle growling as if to utter a battle cry. Gilda recognized this to be the statue of Nightmare Moon, Princess Luna's former self. She knew from Rainbow Dash's boastful stories of how she and her friends had defeated the princess and saved Equestria. However, the statue on the left was not a pony, but something completely different. A Draconiquis. It had the head of a pony, bearing two different kinds of horns, atop a body of a snake like a dragon, with limbs of other different predators. The statue's face was pure shock and fear, its jaw agape and eyes wide. She only knew of what the creature was from old equestrian mythology. But why was a statue of a supposed myth standing alongside one with true historical relevance? Ah, but am I truly a myth? The voice had read her mind. The voice came from the statue of the Draconiquis. Gilda shivered in anger. Her mind had somehow been an open book to an inanimate object. The invasion of her personal thoughts was unnerving, and it made her feel more vulnerable than she was comfortable with. Here's the deal, you block of rock, she started, glaring into the stone face of the statue. I'm not sure how or why you're able to speak, or why I'm even listening. So you either stay out of my head, or I will walk. Come now, my little griffin, there's no fun in being so direct. I like to get to know the few I can actually communicate with. 